Yo, what's happening? We're going to talk about the difference between Bino PDF and Bino CDF. Now, PDF is winning exactly X number of times out of a few games, and CDF is cumulative. So it's winning X or less games out of so many games, okay? So it's X or less wins out of so many games, which is cumulative, and PDF is exactly X wins out of so many games. So we're going to compare the two by first building a probability table by using PDF, and we'll show you how CDF works, and then we'll talk about the funky language that can be used to try to trick you or challenge you um, in these types of problems. So that's what we're going to work on. So let's just talk about quickly, PDF is exactly X, where CDF is X or less. And we're going to consider, consider the game we talked about in the last video, which is, here's the game, it's a spinner, and there's some arrow pointing, and you spin it, and the probability of winning is 0.2, and the probability of losing is 0.8. Remember, some books call the probability of winning P and the probability of losing Q. And Q is just 1 minus P. So 1 minus 0.2 gives you that 0.8. So sometimes you'll see it as a 1 minus P. Same thing, all right? So probability of winning, probability of losing. So if you play five times, create a binomial probability table. So here we'll do the number of wins and the probability of getting those wins, okay? So x equals x, sorry. So the number of wins, you either win 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And we talked about finding this table. To do out the whole table, you can use Bino PDF. You're playing 5 times. The probability of winning is 0 0.2, winning 0. And then you fill in the table by, well, if you play 5 times, 0 0.2, you win exactly once. 0 0.2 win exactly twice, 0 0.2 win exactly three times, win four times, and win five times. Now, I'm going to fill it in right here real quick. And here we go. We got this filled out. We used it. I rounded it to two decimal places, so there's a 33% chance you don't win at all. 40% chance you win exactly once, 20% chance you win twice. If you spin it five times, there's only a 5% chance you win it three times, and so on. But you can take that, actually, and you can create what sometimes you draw a picture of the distribution. And the picture of the distribution just takes these numbers. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see it. Oh, man, my... My camera just fell. Wait a second. All right. Cool. So um, I'm going to show a picture of this distribution by, so here's my probability of it happening. And winning zero would be 33% of the time. So I'll go up to 33. It looks something like this. Winning exactly one time. Once you win about 41% of the time. So I'd go to 41. There it is. A little over 40. Winning exactly twice would get you up to 20%. Winning exactly three times would only be about 5%. Uh, four times is about 1%. And five times, is, it's not, it's like a little bit more. It's like a little, so there's the, dis, there's the probability distribution, all right? Now, you may be asked to draw a couple times. The AP test had you draw and sketch the probability distribution. This is what a binomial distribution looks like, okay? It's skewed to the right. Um, and you think about it. I mean, you only have a 20% chance of winning, so you're expected to win only 20% of the time, right? So your expected winning, actually, your expected winning is 0.2 times... What is that? 0 0.2 times the number of games, 5. So you're expected to win 20% of 5. You're expected to win exactly once. That's your expected winning. And notice, most of the times you do win once. And then 0 and 2 and then further away, right? That's your expected winnings. But let's talk more about this uh, binomial probability. And then we'll talk about it, the, uh, the full distribution in a minute when we're, when we're done. Now, if you play 5 times, here's the binomial table. But... What if I wanted to know what's the likelihood you win three or less times, or two or less times, or five or less times, okay? So if someone asked you that question, what's the probability that you win two or less times? Well, that's asking you what's the probability you win either two, or you win once, or you win sorry, zero times. So the probability of winning two, so probability two or less times, if you go to the table, are these. Winning two, once, or zero. So I'd have to add those all up. So if I add these all up, three and one makes a four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You get about a 94% chance 
of winning two or less times. But instead of adding those up, is there a quicker way? Yeah, there is. The quicker way is using Bino CDF. Now, Bino CDF would do it for you. You just do Bino CDF. Five games, a probability of winning point two, and you want to know two or less. So you still have Bino CDF, still does N, P, X, and this is the number of games. This is the probability of winning, and this is this or less wins, okay? X or less wins is what that's talking about. So if I put it in my trusty calculator, I take it out again. Where do you find it? Let's take a look. Well, my batteries are low. Recommend change of batteries. I'll have to do that at some point. Second dister, I'm going to go down to Bino, pass PDF over to CDF. I want to find if I play five games with a probability of winning as 20% and I want to win two or less, will it give me about 94%? 0.94, exactly what would happen if I added up all of those. Be careful because the question wording can be super tricky. What do I mean the question wording could be super tricky? Well, think about this. What are the possible winnings? So think of all of the possible winnings. of five if you play five games and i'm going to list five games and we'll talk about all these crazy possibilities okay. all right this is something to consider um really uh that i want to make sure you understand is that bino cdf talks about x or less successes only not more questions will ask for more but cdf only gives you x or less successes so how are you going to do that when they ask for more? Well, you have to think about all of the possible number of wins out of five or whatever games and then be clever about it. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. All right. So um, let's look at this, the verbiage here. So if they're asked for three or less, well, that's nice. Uh, three or less, X or less. Then we just go straight for it. We do. We enter into our buy no CDF. We'll enter in. Well, we have five games with a probability of winning that. We're going to enter in three, and that's fine, because what are we asking for? Three or less is that right there. Less than three is a little bit tricky. Less than three does not include three. Less than three is right here. Less than three is the same thing as two or less. So what we have to do is, to do less than three, we have to go, oh, five, zero point two. Two. We have to do bino CDF, put that in, right? Now we've got a more than, th whoa, more than three. Well, more than three would be four or five, which is weird because I don't have a more than. I only have a less than. So I can think about what's this guy right here. This is more than three. This is three or less. I can find three or less. So what you actually do is to find more, to find that much, you just do one minus this much because these two things added together has to equal one. So one plus this, this plus this equals one. So one minus this must equal this. So what you actually have to do is do, 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 one minus Bino, so you got to do one minus. Any more than is a one minus. Bino CDF 5.23. Okay. Now notice this one's saying three or more. Three or more. So we want to find this much, but I don't have a more than. I can do this. This is two or less. So what I'm going to do here is one minus two or less will give me three or more. Aha. So I'm going to do one minus Bino CDF 5.22. So it, be ready. These one minuses, any of the more than more thans have to be a one minus. Here's one, another one. At least three. At least three means three, four, or five. So we're looking for this again. At least three is the same thing as this. We're going to do the exact same thing here. At most three, meaning you can have at most three, which means you can have three, two, one, or zero. You can have these, not those. And that's just three or less. So you're just going to do bino CDF. You're going to put in 
Um, Bino CDF 5.23. All right. No more than three, meaning not more than three, saying not more than three, same thing as at most three, not more than three, meaning three is okay, exact same thing as above, that same thing right there. Now the last one, no less than three, no less than three, well, I can't have less than three, but three is okay, I can't have two, one, or zero, which means I can have these guys, just not these guys, now this is a higher than. There is nothing like this. No less than three is the same thing as three or more. So here's another one where I have to do one minus, oops, one minus bino CDF. I'm going to do, uh, sorry, 5.2 comma two or less. All right, and that's how you're going to have to plug that in. So that's how you work the more than and greater. Just be careful. Um, it's, it's, it's very tricky. The last thing about the binomial distribution, if you go back to this guy right here, um, Binomial distribution always has the, uh, whoops, I make it, let's make another, it's going to make another little thing. So right back here, remember the binomial model is always talking about a number of successes or a number of wins. The expected number of wins is always just however many games you play times the probability of winning. And the standard deviation of the dis this distribution is always the square root of N. P, Q, which is uh, playing, uh, the winning and losing. So for our game of five, the expected number here would be five games with a probability of winning of 0.2. So you're expected to win once. And the standard deviation would be the square root of five games times 0.2 times 0.8, which I don't even know what that is. So I'm just going to put it in the calculator right now. Um, let's see, square root. Parentheses are already in there. Good. 5 times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8. Whoops. Let's see. Uh, 0.89. So the standard deviation of x is 0.89. And the expected value, the mean or the center of the pile or your expected value is 1. It is not normally distributed. This thing is super skewed. Okay. This is not normal. Not normal. But... When you get a really big sample size, all right, if you get enough games, if you play, if your NP and NQ, if basically if your wins and successes, your wins and losses are expected to be over 10. So basically when you play like, you know, when your NP and your NQ, number of games you're playing and the number of expected wins and losses are both greater than 10, then it starts looking normalish. It starts looking normalish. But a binomial distribution, as you can see, the one we made here, it's not normal. It's skewed until you play the game a bunch of times. So I'm hoping that helps you out. That was a lot of stuff, man. Um, I'm hoping that you understood the difference between PDF and CDF, and we're talking about exactly X successes. When you play the game, if you're playing like 30 times, or if like, suppose it's like the probability, they're like, oh, 20% of, 20% of people, um, 20% of people like bacon on their muffins. Um, and so you had the probability of winning would be 0.2, and the probability of losing would be 0.8, and you ask, 30 people is is the distribution going to be unimodal and symmetric and normalish no it's not because think of 30 times 0.2 and 30 times 0.8 np and nq this would be q loss this is 6 and this is 24 so it's not quite there yet you need to ask what if i ask 50 people well let's see if I ask 50 people, 50 times 0.2, ah, that's 10, and 50 times 0.8, that's 4. Okay, so once you get up to around 50 people, if the probability of winning is 0.2, it starts actually looking kind of normal-ish. So the number of successes, you're still expecting around 10, and the standard deviation is root NPQ still, it'll start looking normal at those high numbers. We'll talk about that in another, uh, it'll be called... The normal approximation to the binomial, but you don't ever really use it because your calculator does it exactly for you anyway. So there's no reason to spend all that time doing all that other stuff. So a lot of people do. There's books talk about it, but don't don't think the binomial model 
is the normal model. It's not. It's only when NP is the expected number of wins and the expected number of losses is really large. Then it becomes normal-ish. Never normal. Okay, you can just approximate it. All right, man. I'll keep talking. I'll just keep talking all night. Have a good day.